Welcome to worship here at Orange Congregational Church. We're the King family. I'm Kelly. I'm Stuart. And this, and this is, is Owen. Owen. Our church is an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, and that means that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today is the second Sunday in Advent. People of all times and places have longed for peace. On this second Sunday of Advent, we celebrate that the way of Jesus Christ is a way that leads to peace. It leads to peace in the heart by bringing us forgiveness and teaching us to trust in God. It leads to peace in our home and world by helping us to be forgiving, compassionate, and kind people. Yeah, yeah buddy. Jesus Christ is known by many names. One of them is the Prince of Peace. He is also called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And he is called the light of the world. We light this candle to proclaim our faith in the coming of Christ's light into the world. With Christ's advent comes peace. And how about Bill? Let's go. Let's go. Oh, there you go. Good job, buddy. Good job. All right. Wait. <clears throat> For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government <laughs> shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Today, let us hope that by welcoming Christ into our lives, we will become like candles ourselves, full of his light, helping to bring peace, love, and joy to the world. Amen. Okay. Welcome. Welcome all into worship this day at this beloved community of Orange Congregational Church. It is good to be together on this Sunday of peace. We're continuing our Advent journey as we prepare our hearts and lives for Christmas, for the birth of the Christ child. And Advent reminds us that if Christ is to be born anew in our hearts and in our lives, that we must prepare. We must prepare the way and be ready for the gift of Jesus Christ. And so we gather together in worship on these days and we prepare together to make space in our homes and our hearts and our community for the birth of love, which is coming into the world even now. Welcome to this tiny corner of our struggling world and together let us prepare for the coming hope, peace, joy, love and justice of Jesus Christ. Welcome. Uh...
Please join me in prayer. O come, O come, Emmanuel, come into our hearts, reminding us that you are the Prince of Peace, bringing healing and peace to all times and places, all those places who have longed for it. O come, O come, Emmanuel, you who guide us to peaceful living, create in us a new heart by bringing forgiveness to ourselves and others and teaching us to trust in you. O come, O come, Emmanuel, who is, who was, and who is yet to come. Fill us with peace so that in the midst of our suffering and isolation and grief, we remember that we are not alone. O come, Emmanuel, and hear us as we pray together the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This week's word is peace. What does peace look like? Peace might look like the peace symbol, or even a dove as the symbol of peace. Peace can even look like people getting along. What does peace feel like? Peace might feel very calm and soothing. Out in the world, sometimes things are not calm or soothing. And even inside, we might not feel calm. But as Christians, there are things that we can do that can help bring peace to the world, just like Jesus taught us. One of those things could be to treat each other with kindness. And also, to bring peace to ourselves, we can do things like pray, take a walk, or even sit quietly. This week, on your paper, remember to write down when you see things that remind you of peace when you feel peace, and even ways in which you can do what Jesus taught us to do, and treat each other with kindness, how you can do that, and ways that you can help yourself feel peace inside. Don't forget, take a picture, send it to Victoria by Thursday, then we can all share our ideas of peace with each other. Our first scripture this week is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like a flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms 
and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Our second reading this week is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong on his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, open our hearts to the peace which you embody, and let that peace flow through us into your world. Amen. Today is the second Sunday in the holy season of Advent, our Sunday of peace. And I want to just sit with that word for a moment. Like we did last week with the idea of hope, I want us to pause with this idea of peace. Let your mind open to the idea of peace, deep abiding peace. Let peace settle into your heart and into your soul. Breathe in peace and breathe out peace. Let your imagination rest and be filled with the peace of the coming Christ child, the Prince of Peace, into a world in deep need. Peace in our hearts, in our families, in our nation, in God's world. Let's not hurry past this moment, this opportunity to invite peace in. So, our Advent scriptures for this Sunday, this Sunday of peace, focus on the need to prepare. Prepare the way of the Lord. To prepare the way of the Lord so that when he comes, when God's promises of justice, of peace, of freedom, of salvation are fulfilled, we are ready. I'm particularly struck this year by the simple and easily overlooked fact that the prophet Isaiah and John the Baptist both call God's people to prepare from the wilderness. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Now, throughout the Bible, the wilderness is a place of danger and of temptation and of chaos. It is liminal space, that in-between place where ordinary life is suspended and people wrestle with their own inner demons, with loss, with their true self, and even with God, where one's identity shifts and changes, and it can feel like a wasteland of hunger and confusion and loneliness and grief. Yet still, it is precisely here, 
precisely in this wilderness that God's people are called to prepare for the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Now, we should note that there, of course, is more to the biblical concept and experience of wilderness than the chaos and danger. Eventually, in the wilderness, new possibilities emerge. It can be a place for solitude and true nourishment and revelation from God, but generally that comes later, after the suffering, after the deprivation, after the struggle. And the truth of the matter is that we can't wait until the potential positive gifts, as we might see them, the positive gifts of the wilderness become manifest before preparing for what God has in store. Right here, right now, surrounded by the wilds and the fears and the turmoil of the wilderness, we are called to prepare. So not to put too fine a point on it, but it sure feels to me that this year as we journey through an advent of illness and uncertainty and grief and death, that we, my friends, are individually and collectively in the wilderness. And we must prepare the way of the Lord. So how do we do that? I believe that we need to be mindful about putting down our roots into the ground of God's promise of hope, peace, joy, and love, and that we do that by practicing our faith. How we spend our time, literally how we spend our minutes and hours and days says so much about what we value and what we desire and what we love. We prepare for the coming birth of Christ by creating time and space each and every day to be with God. This is what I called last week an orientation of the heart. And this practice of our faith is a practice of an enfleshed faith, an embodied practice. And that is so important for us to remember. Christianity is not an intellectual pursuit. Christianity is an incarnational, embodied, communal practice. So remember that Jesus didn't just sit in the synagogue or sit around a campfire and talk about God, right? He walked with his disciples, with his people. He said to them, come and see. He said, follow me. He walked and ate and drank and healed. He fed people and he laid his hands on their broken bodies. He cooked fish on the beach and he let a woman who was despised wet his feet with the tears of her sorrow and dry them with her hair. He spit in the dirt and made mud and wiped it on some poor blind man's eyes so that he could see. He knelt down and he washed the dirty, tired feet of his disciples. You see, through it all, through all of these ways of intimately embodying love, he showed the people with his body, with his life, who God is. Christianity is not 
an intellectual pursuit. This is so easy for us to forget. The comedian John Mulvaney in one of his Netflix stand-up specials does a bit where he says, I don't know exactly what my body is for other than taking my head from room to room. It's funny because it's so true that we spend so much of our time in our heads, right? Thinking, thinking, thinking all the time. It's ceaseless, it's endless. But if there's one thing that I know, it's that we cannot think our way into authentic discipleship or faith. We cannot think our way into salvation. We cannot prepare the way of the Lord, prepare our hearts and souls and lives and world for the life-changing gift of Jesus Christ simply by thinking about him. We prepare in this season by creating space and time in our hearts and our lives to receive God. It reminds me of the practice that some women, many women experience at the end of a pregnancy called nesting. When you're nesting, you have this strong urge, this unstoppable urge to physically prepare a space and a place for your soon to be born child, a space of safety and beauty and calm a space ready to hold the precious holy love embodied in a tiny human being. Advent is a time when we are called to practice nesting, to prepare for the coming Christ child, the birth of God's saving love into this suffering world. We must prepare the way. We do this by creating that space and time each and every day for prayer and worship and devotion and servanthood. And so I want to invite you this week in this our season of wilderness, our season of nesting, of preparation, to imagine new ways to embody your faith to move from your head into your heart and your body. Try something new. Create an altar in your home with objects of beauty that you can touch and feel and hold as you pray. Practice time of prayer in a different way than you usually do, an embodied way, kneel down as you pray or lay prostrate with your forehead on the ground before God in humility. Take a walk outside and turn that walk into a prayer walk, walking slowly each and every step, an opportunity for another gratitude. Sit on the edge of your bathtub and wash your feet or the feet of your child or your partner or your parent with warm water and feel that water as a symbol of God's love and care. Stand outside with your face towards the sun and raise your arms and ask Christ into your heart. Prepare a meal with precise attention to and gratitude for each and every ingredient and every human being who played a part in making that food available to you. And with a thankful heart, eat it slowly or deliver it to a friend. Put on an album of your favorite Christmas carols and sing at the top of your lungs as you dance around the house. If too much movement is hard or you must stay in your chair or in your bed, place your hands over your heart. Feel the warmth of your hands and ask God to enter your beating ready heart. 
How we spend our time says so much about what we value, what we desire, what we love. And we prepare in this season for the coming birth of the Christ child by creating that space and time every day to be with God. This season, see if you can fully embody your preparation to pray with your body, with your whole being. Get out of your head and prepare the way of the Lord. We may be in the wilderness, dear ones, but Isaiah and John and Jesus have shown us that the wilderness is the precise place in which we must prepare for the coming hope, peace, joy, love, and justice of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to God's Table of Grace. If you haven't yet prepared elements for communion this day, I invite you to pause our worship video here and go do so now. As we come to this table in this sacred season of Advent, we are reminded that this is the table of Jesus Christ, a banquet prepared for everyone. All who seek to be nourished and sustained in the journey of faith. All who seek wholeness and compassionate paths to peace and justice are welcome here. Let us pray. Blessed are you, breath of peace, giver of all life, source of love that knows no boundaries. Your song of wisdom rang out before the world began. Throughout the ages, your song of liberation has impregnated us with your hope for a world where those considered last and least are first and most. Where violence is overcome by the power of your ancient love and all people work together for peace. You bring our longings to birth and send prophets to awaken us to your approaching advent among us. We thank you for those who, like Mary, have the strength and courage to give birth to your love in the world. For those who, like the shepherds, dare to seek out the child of Bethlehem, for those who, like the wise ones, actively challenge violent and oppressive powers. We praise you that your everlasting light is shown to us in womb and tomb, in cradle and cross, in tenderness and compassion. And we join in the Advent prayer of all your people, O come, O come, Emmanuel. At this time, we also remember around this table of grace all with whom you would have us share your feast. We pray for all who are in sorrow or in pain, all who are ill or alone, all who live with fear, oppression, or hunger, all whose lives have been blighted by violence, racism, or poverty for all whom the world counts as last and least. We pray for your church and its many ministries, for nations as they strive for peace and justice and for an end to violence against all your people. God of hope, make this bread the means of our rebuilding. Make this cup the medium of our transformation. Make this table the foundation of our renewal and this community the place of our rebirth. Amen. 
around God's tables of grace, we remember Jesus, who on the night before he died took a loaf of bread, gave you thanks, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, then, he took a cup and again, giving thanks to God, said, Take and drink, for this is the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, breath of peace, source of love, we pray for your spirit. Make us, while many, one. Make us, though broken, whole. Make us, despite death, alive. And so we pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. I invite you now to take this bread, take and eat the body of Christ, the bread of life. And take and drink the lifeblood of Christ, the cup of blessing. We thank you, God, for breaking into our world and pouring into our lives your saving presence. We thank you, God, for this meal of thanksgiving that we share, even from afar, and the stories of love, grace, and hope that it tells even today. Amen. Holy and living God, Prince of Peace, we pray. As we journey down this Advent road, grant us the courage to make peace. Peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our communities. And so we pray. We share with you, God, and with our church, the gratitude of Bob Heggers, who gives thanks for all the sympathy and support following his wife, Rosemary's death. We offer prayers for peace for all those grieving a loved one this holiday season. We pray for Ian Isdale. We pray that he be pain-free and at peace. We pray for Jim Clark recovering from brain surgery. We pray for our communities as COVID continues to rise among us. We pray for those struggling with quarantine. We pray for those whose mental health and emotional health and spiritual health is challenged. We give thanks for the peacemakers, for those called and empowered to live out ways of justice so that all who are oppressed and marginalized are lifted up with just peace restored. We pray now the silent prayers of our hearts. God, you promised hope in the coming of your son and he was hope for the world. We lift up our hearts with peace. We open our hands in peaceful prayer. We give to you, God, our longing for peace in a suffering world, our need for peace in places where there is none. We give you thanks for the peace of Christ lift up these prayers to you and ask for blessings to come down. In Jesus' name, 
the Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. from here filled with hope and with that peace that passes human understanding given to us by God this day. May night give way to morning, may darkness break open to light, and may you prepare a place in your heart and in your lives for the coming Christ child. Hope in the Lord, for he is coming to make all things new. Amen. <laughs>